Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will learn on the next liquid phase synthesis in producing ceramic powders, which is emulsion method. Right. Emulsion involves a mixture of two or more liquids that are immiscible, which means that they are unblendable. One substance, the dispersed phase, is dispersed in the other, the continuous phase. As a result, you will get a cloudy appearance due to many phase in the mixture. And the interface actually scatter light that pass through the emulsion. Okay, so what is emulsion? So this is phase A, the bluish, and phase B is the yellowish. Okay, in figure A, you can see that phase A and phase B are totally separated. This means that there are two immiscible liquids not emulsified. Okay, in figure B, you can see that emulsion of phase B dispersed in the continuous phase A. Figure C show that the unstable emulsion progressively separates. So you can see phase B now agglomerate at the top of the uh, surface in the phase A. Okay. And finally, in figure D, the surfactant position itself on the surface between phase A and phase B. If you can see the purple ring outside phase B, between phase B and phase A. Okay, so this surfactant will help to stabilize the emulsion. Okay, there are four possible failures in emulsion. There can be coalescence, creaming, breaking and flocculation. So good emulsion should look like this. Phase B should be completely dispersed in phase A or the dispersed phase should be completely uh, uniformly dispersed in the continuous phase. That will give you a good emulsion. Okay, so how to overcome the failures in emulsion? So we introduce surfactant. Surfactant the function of surfactant is to stabilize the immiscible liquids, such as water and organic. So how can surfactant do that? It reduces the surface tension of the immiscible liquids, resulting in dispersed phase confined to nanometer scale. So example of surfactant, such as NP5, SPAN80, or polyoxyclin. Okay. Um, but the drawback of surfactant is it is potentially toxic, especially when you use in higher amount, maybe like 20% out of the total weight percent. Okay, there are three types of emulsion. We have emulsion, micro emulsion, nano emulsion. Okay, so emulsion, the conventional emulsion, they are the more dynamically unstable, very cloudy, the droplet size is bigger than 500 nanometer, very viscous and low kinetically stable. That means it's easy to sediment and no surfactant use. Okay, so to improve the conventional emulsion, the researchers have then introduced micro emulsion. In micro emulsion, we got a good thermodynamically stable. It can even be transparent or maybe slightly cloudy. The droplet size can be reduced to less or equal to 200 nanometer and it's low viscosity, sorry for the typo. And um, it can be moderate kinetically stable. And But the problem with microemulsion, it requires large amount of surfactant. Like I said, it may need more or equal to 20 weight percent of surfactant. That is a lot. Okay, recently the researchers have then moved from micro emulsion to nano emulsion. Okay, so nano emulsion, the problem is it is the more dynamically unstable. It can be transparent or milky wax. Okay, the droplet size is about 100 nanometer, it's very low viscosity, highly kinetically stable, it's very good that it is against sedimentation. Okay. And the beauty of nano emulsion is that no surfactant required to obtain micron 
micro emulsion like dispersion. So if you are making ceramics for medical or dental applications, okay, which is called bioceramics, never ever use micro emulsion because you will need a lot of surfactant which potentially be toxic. So the best choice for bioceramic powders is to use a nano emulsion. You can get a very uh, fine particles without the use of surfactant. So nano emulsion is chemically suitable for producing bioceramic products. It can be simply explained by because the use of potentially toxic components can be minimized or even avoided at all. Okay, a nano emulsion is reproducible nanoparticle size with a narrow size distribution, which is good, um, good point because this is one of the characteristics for advanced ceramic powders. Okay, if you remember, and this one can be achieved without an external energy source. That is the reason why nano emulsion has been widely used for bioceramics synthesis. This is example of bioceramic powders, which is carbonated hydroxy apatite. So this is a typical uh, preparation steps involved in CHA by nano emulsion. So first of all, for all liquid phase synthesis, the first thing you need to do is to prepare the solution. So here you prepare ammonium uh, hydrogen phosphate. So this is the phosphate source and ammonium hydrogen carbonate, which is the carbonate source. And you disperse these two in the ionized water separately. Okay, carbonated hydroxy appetite, the main composition of CHA must have phosphate source, calcium source, and carbonate source. So here, the first step, we prepare phosphate source and carbonate source separately. Then the next step, we mix phosphate and carbonate and adjust the pH to, let's say, 11 using sodium hydroxide, which is the alkaline um, pH controller. Okay, so this will become solution one. Then we prepare solution two, consists of calcium nitrate tetrahydrate in acetone, okay? Because calcium nitrate tetrahydrate is better dispersed in acetone compared to the ionized water. And the other reason is because we want to create the emulsion, okay? So we need one source of alcohol base and the rest can be in aqueous base. Okay, so we then drop the calcium nitrate slowly into solution one, okay, and continuously stir. And finally, we can filter and wash with the ionized water for a couple of times until we get rid of the smell, um, the ammonium smell, okay. And then uh, the filter cake, we have to dry at 90 degrees C for overnight or 24 hours, okay. And finally, we have to grind the dried filter cake to get the carbonated hydroxy appetite powders. And as usual, as materials engineer, we have to characterize the powders produced to confirm that it is what we want. Okay? Okay, so that's all for nano emulsion. I'll see you in the next lecture.